In this podcast episode, I'm talking to my good friend Kirby Bridges about our favorite book, You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero. Hey everyone, okay. it's Adrian. And Kirby is over there in the dark. Kirby, how's the um, weather in good old Milwaukee treating you? Horrible. <laughs> we, just had the, we just had the time change and it's already dark. And it's starting to get dark outside at 4.30 p.m. Uh, and I'm not happy about it, quite frankly. No. It's one of the <laughs> things I love as a tennis coach is getting to be outdoors. And I notice when it's coming to winter because every day you're out there and it's getting darker a little bit earlier, a little bit. And as soon as I notice that, a little bit of me dies inside. And the opposite oh. when it's in winter and you go, wow, it got dark at five. Now it's getting light, dark at five, past five. Like, oh, happy summer's coming. So Yeah, I'm very jealous of that the sunshine on your face right now, Adrian. Um, you should see the, the watch tan. Oh, uh, anyway, yeah. we are going, we're going to book club mode today and we're talking about a book that I clued onto only on the last week because I was thinking of a word that kind of encapsulates how I want to be and how I, all the people that I love, how I would love them to lead their life. And the word I came up with was badass. Now, I know I can't say it. I'm not going to say badass, so badass. And I read Jen Sincero's book, which is You Are a Badass, How to Stop Doubting Your Greatness and Start Living an Awesome Life. And mm. I knew you had read it. So how did you come across the book? Because when I mentioned this book to you, you said that's my favorite book, which is a big statement. This is my favorite book in the whole world. I love You Are a Badass, and it absolutely helped me to launch into the life that I love living. And um, I just, I know people who whose lives it's also helped. So the way mm. that I came about it, um, it's kind of weird, actually. I, um, and it's sort of random. I was, I was in Los Angeles living there, and was seeking a direction, very much seeking a direction. And I happened to be at Barnes and Noble mm -hmm. um, with my roommate at the time. And I was looking for another book, but I couldn't find it. And I just saw this yellow cover looking back at me and I picked it up and I read it in a couple of days. And what ensued was the start of my journey. So what happened for me was I took this home and I read it. I poured over it page after page after page. Mm. And I couldn't put it down. I read it on my lunch break and I, I just zipped right through it. Yeah. But before I was even finished with it, I saw that there was this opportunity um, in Atlanta coming up at the end of the week. And it was a, a boot camp over the weekend over, um, over, Saturday and Sunday and it came down to the wire and it was, it was Friday. Wow. And I think because of this book, um, I was inspired and determined enough and kind of starting to play at a higher level energetically mm. enough that I, within 24 hours of this, of this boot camp starting, I booked a flight to Atlanta. I went to this boot camp. I met um, this manager from LA who has absolutely changed my life now. And it's put me on the course to, to where I am right now. That so. is scary, scarily similar to one of the stories in the actual book. I can't remember if there was a name, but there was a girl who I think she was in Italy and she saw a house, yeah. walked by a house. Yeah, you know the story. She walks oh, by yeah. and goes, Oh my God, that's my dream house. So she was broke, mm -hmm. completely broke. She goes back, tells everyone she's, she decides, and this is one of the key concepts, she decides she's getting the house, buying the house, no matter what. Mm -hmm. But she has no money and she doesn't live in Italy. So, you know, she's living in America, I assume. And she found a way to do it. And basically everyone told her she was crazy, especially the people 
who loved her said, what, what are you doing? You're broke, you're this, you're that, you, you don't live over there. She found a way to buy the house basically by renting out, renting it out. Um, so that, that story is very, very similar. Uh, and what I love about the book in particular, because you said, how long did it take you to read it from cover to cover? Was it like a week, a couple of days? Um, it pro- probably three days. Yeah, because it's probably- not a long book. No, it's it's really not. What is it like? Uh, and you've actually got the hard copy there. As I said, I got it on Kindle. But- um, it's not even two hundred and fifty pages, yeah. and and it goes by so quickly because of how it's written. It's so yeah. it's easy to read. It's not. Um, yeah. It it's so digestible um, that it honestly the thing that I how I describe this book always is that it's like you're talking to somebody because it's so conversational. That's exactly what I was going to say. It makes it so easy to get through. Mm. Um, and I've read books that are similar to this, you know, that have to do about the law of attraction or, you know, and, and this topic. Mm. And uh, it just, sometimes they, they sound like they're talking down to you or it's just like, it's not talking with you mm. it's somebody talking at you and this yeah. this book very much like breaks that barrier for me and yeah. i feel like the author is my best friend just talking to me and i feel like the way she writes is um it, it just makes sense to me it resonates with me and yeah page after page i kept thinking oh my god this is what I'm always saying, but she's putting, and, and what I'm always thinking and how I live, but yep. she puts words to it and it's brilliant. That's, I, I, I also love the way that she wrote the book because if, I don't know if the people watching have read it. If not, go get it. Like, just go get it and go yeah. read it. Do yourself a favor. Um, you can get yeah. it on Kindle and you can start reading it straight away. You can even get an audio book and do it and, you know, when you're on the treadmill or whatever. But she actually interrupts her own writing and then italics will put in like a crazy thought. Right, and it's yeah. really like not just talking to someone, but also being inside their head. And it's yes. nice when, because we talked about this thing that you know you don't have to worry about being crazy because everybody is crazy. And I'm reading this book and going, oh my god, she she is crazy, but I'm loving it because someone's actually being authentic about it. So, mm-hmm. uh, you've read the book. You when when did you read the book? How long ago did you read the book, Kirby? Um, I actually okay. So in my copy, I guess I should probably. In my copy, um, the first time that I wrote, I read it yeah. was April seventeenth, two thousand fifteen. So about a year and a half ago. Yes, yeah, about I a have, year. I have had it read for about all of a, th- a few days, so uh-huh. we'll have slightly different perspectives on it, which is great. I mean, yeah. you would have digested it more and had more chance to apply. I have, and this is something about getting it on Kindle, which I told Kirby about before the podcast. If you get it on Kindle, you can highlight it, you know, touchscreen wise, and then Kindle, uh, what do you call it, brings together all the highlights that you've done. So I basically have, and it says here, you have 214 highlighted passages, which you just said yeah. the, the book is about 200 pages. So it's basically a passage every page, and the book is like that. I don't know how it was for you, but every like paragraph I'm going, you could quote that. You could quote that. You could turn it into a Twitter quote, an Instagram, whatever you want, like a, a good one, not one of those crappy ones. So, <laughs> I do you want to lead off with some of the concepts that resonate with you? I mean, I, I've got loads of highlights here and I'll, I'll chip in wherever, but what are some of, like, if you were to say one, two, or three things, or even like the first page you turn to, what's mm-hmm. an idea that really resonated with you maybe when you first read the book or even now? The idea of energy Mm -hmm. is something that I really connect with in this book. Um, And what she calls it is the foundation for all of the work Mm. that you do in in your life. And it's, it's something, it's knowing that there's something greater than us out there. And maybe you're religious and you call it, God and yep. maybe you're spiritual and you call it the universe or source energy or whatever you want to call it. Mm. Uh, sometimes she calls it the mother load. That's right. But I was trying to think of the term. It's about 
tapping in to your flow and falling into that flow. And when you can fall into that flow, mm. most crazy, amazing things happen to you in your life. Yeah. And I'm such a true believer in that. So that was something that resonated with me hugely um, because she has this approach of first, she introduces how, how you got this way. Yeah. And if you're miserable or you're not doing the things that you want to be doing with your life, what, how your subconscious got you to that place. Yeah. Um, but then she talks about how to embrace your inner badass and bring about self love and tap into that mother load and then how to get over your shit and start gas. So for me, there are so many things, but um, it's energy and self love was which we talked about the greatest thing. Yes, I think every chapter ends. Correct me if I'm wrong. With love yourself. Yes, it does. Yeah, and it's uh, it's again, a reminder. Yeah. It, yeah, it just hammers it hammers that point over and over and over until you wake up and you get it. We're exactly right, because I think a lot of people need to hear that more than once, because to be honest, I, I saw it on the first chapter, second chapter, because th- when you hear love yourself, I still think it's a little bit, eh, love yourself is like, okay. Um, but when you read it for the seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth time, then you start to get the idea, actually, maybe this is kind of important. Um, but I do love one of the ones she goes, love yourself, and then underneath it, she puts, well, I mean, what other option is there? And I read that yeah. one and I went, well, that's really true. I mean, you love yourself and if you don't like it, well, what else are you going to do? So I love that one. And in terms of the energy, the, the frequency, help me out here. I'm, I'm not really down with the whole resonating at it. Like, I'm not down with it. I don't really understand it in terms of frequency. So, and they talked a little bit about this in The Secret and she talked about it in terms of like attracting car parking spaces, right? Mm-hmm. So when you're looking for a car park spot, rather than going in and assuming that you're not going to find one and then getting really, really angry when someone cuts in front of you and honking at the, you know, the pensioners and what have you, she goes in and basically attracts one to her by being at a higher level or a higher frequency. Can you break that down a little bit for me? Because that loses me a little bit. Um, being at a higher frequency. So mm. in in... I'm so glad that you brought that that up, just yeah. that one specific reference, because it's a great jumping off point to understand higher frequency. And what that higher frequency would mean for her driving along, or for you, let's imagine it's you, you're mm. driving along, you're about to go get a parking spot before you reach your final destination, maybe it's the grocery store or the gym, and you're looking for a really good one. And you know, every time you come here, it's, it's a horrible time trying to find a spot and you have to park five blocks down and go around the corner. And it takes you 20 minutes to find a spot. And before (laughs) you know it, before you know it, you are angry and you feel, you feel like, Oh, I mean, this tension in your body because you're already so upset about some this thing that hasn't even happened. Yeah, I'm starting and to get that way right now because I can picture the place in my mind. <laughs> exactly, that it's so hard to find this parking spot. But instead of, of, of allowing yourself to get carried away in that feeling, that's the energy. Yeah. So when you feel this, it's about unloading that and instead of approaching things in that way the oh i can't it's heavy and burdensome and i don't want this to happen you approach it in in an open-minded and clear space really genuinely feeling that you are going to find a parking spot right out in front it's going to be the first one and and you absolutely genuinely feel it i'm gonna have to practice this shit (laughs) in the same way that you felt previously heavy and pissed off about having to find a a bad parking spot now you put those good feelings into it and good things happen to you and i think i think that is um 
that's the basic concept and it resonates, it ripples out to everything in your life that when you put these good feelings toward it and you really, really feel it and you mm. know what you want, amazing things happen. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. I, I've never heard anyone able to language it the way you just languaged it. Um, I, I, I get it, the concept, I language it slightly differently which is in a basic way, whatever you focus on expands. So, mm -hmm. and I notice it particularly with driving. I'm a fairly mellow guy. Put me in a car with Sydney drivers, like the last week, <laughs> I cannot tell you. And once I get angry, like, and someone would just go, and this, it's a little thing, but let's say you had a bit too much coffee, you're a bit sleep deprived, which has been my story this week, moving on. And then someone <laughs> cuts you off, you get yep. annoyed. And when you're annoyed, when you're at that energy, you start noticing everything that's beginning to annoy you. It gets worse and worse. And within half an hour, it's not like angry anymore. It's like full-blown road rage slash angry, wanting to kill somebody. And <laughs> you're absolutely right. And then some days you have like when you're just in flow and everything seems to happen like gracefully for you. Yeah. It, and it, I think it, everyone's it, had both it, days, it, right? Yeah. So yeah, you, so you take your pick. If you had your choice, which day would you want to live? Exactly. And that's one of the things she said, and it, it's so simple, like it's a choice. And mm -hmm. you know, you can either choose, well, one of the quotes I had here, I told you, is you can either choose to be happy or you can choose to be right. And mm -hmm. that is such a fundamental choice, I think, that everyone has in life. And whenever you're talking to someone who's unhappy, they go, oh, yeah, yeah you don't understand. It's like, no, we all understand that we all have shit to go through. Yeah. And what are you going to do about it? I mean, like if someone close to you passes, God forbid, it's not asking you to be happy straight away, but whatever point you find yourself at in life, I think you always have a decision as to what you're going to do about it. And I think a lot of people are kind of living in reaction and they're living, there's another thing she talked about, which is living in their story, right? Or living in their excuses, which I think is an absolutely huge one. Um, but can I ask you, how do you feel about the actual word itself? Bad, I still can't say it, badass. Badass. What does that um, mean to you? I, oh, good question. Because when you, when you admire or respect people, I've noticed that you label them as badasses. So I do. For, for you, it's a particular word. So what does it mean to Kirby Bridges, that word? It's someone who I have utmost respect for because I admire that they are blazing the path they're meant to be on. So someone who's living their life very authentically. Yes. Living yes. their life on purpose. Living life on purpose. Exactly. I think people are, they're a badass if they have that, they're a badass when they are living their life on purpose. And with that said, when you can reckon people like that are those who are operating out of love mm. instead of fear. And yeah, I, I love the word badass. And I, I think that's probably my favorite descriptor of my favorite people. I think you're a badass. <laughs> I know more. Thank you. I, I know because you describe me as that. I'm like, okay, I want to, I want to dig a little bit, <laughs> a little bit into it. <laughs> I, I just wish I'm, I was better at pronouncing it, to be honest. I'm going to be practicing it like every day in front of the mirror for like 10 minutes because well, badass just, bad just sounds so stupid. Well, as That's I told awesome. everyone, if you get it on Kindle, you, you get to have all your highlighted passages collated. That's the word I was looking for. Collated into to one spot. I hate it when I can't <laughs> think of a word because then my brain goes on tangents. Um, I'm going to, and you stop me if you find one that you really resonate with you but mm -hmm. here's one for example that we can we can talk about mm -hmm. wanting to be someone else is a waste of the person you are mm. so and wow. and the book is is filled with ones like this ah oh, here's one watching someone else totally go for it can be incredibly upsetting to the person who spent a lifetime building a solid case for why they themselves can't I think everybody, everybody knows people in their lives, whether it's your parents 
or their friends or mm. your friends that are not pursuing their passion. Sometimes and it can be a partner. Never, yeah, and they've they've never they've never jumped off that cliff into really going for it and really yeah. going for what they want because they want it. And oh my gosh, it's just it's so frustrating to see those people and see them drown when you see that they actually have so many more opportunities that they're just not open to. Do you remember the story that she relates in the book about the crabs? About how just when you said drowning, if you put a whole bunch of crabs in a bucket and one of them tries to, to crawl out, the other crabs will grab it and pull it back down? But yes. You just reminded me exactly of that. So yeah, they're drowning, but rather than going, hey, help me up, they're pulling you back down into this sort of sea of sameness which yeah. just comes out of this place of fear. Um, and I was at a seminar uh, uh, last week, and one of the dictates that we were given was you have to fire the negative people in your life. And one of the ways he hires people is he has a test for optimism, and if they don't score above 80% in their optimism, they don't hire them or they fire them because he says, attitude you can't teach. The skills I can teach. Mm -hmm. But the attitude comes first. So, I, I absolutely agree. Um, and I think everyone, if we're honest, probably has someone in their lives like that who might need to be um, outsourced. Yeah. <laughs> to put well, it and it, yeah, it's exactly. And it, it relates to our last podcast when we were, when we were talking about cyberbullying. Because mm -hmm. it, it basically equates down to people not being happy within themselves. Yeah. Um, and because if you, you know, once you find this path of being so stinking happy and passionate mm. about pursuing the things that you love, you do not have time in the day to judge other people yeah. and to worry about their, the stuff that they're going through. I mean, I mean that in a bullying capacity. Yeah. Um, and and about their judgment and their critique of you because it doesn't matter because you are happy yeah so i love that i an optimism test i would like to take an optimism that's test exactly, that's exactly what i thought too because i have sometimes uh, slip into a tendency to not be so optimistic and i'm like you know what you really need to cultivate that because we all have emotional like homes that we live in and for yeah. some people it's cynicism for some people it's sarcasm for some people it's gratitude for some people it's joy for, for some people it's love and again that's a choice you get to make because every choice has consequences and i don't believe oh, i'm just cynical i'm just sarcastic it's like no you made a choice at some point in your life and you've just done it so often that that's where yeah. you live I wanted to ask you, because I know you do a lot of personal development, as do I, how do you feel this book was different to other books that you've read or other courses you take? Like, why did this particular one resonate with you so much? Resonated with me because it wasn't, it's not a textbook. Even though no. she takes you through attitude change systematically and how to recover the life that you want to live, it still doesn't read as someone telling me what to do. Yeah, it, definitely. It, it's very much on the same level. And I mean, it's, it's just uh, the way she talks is, is fabulous. Um, she Let talks me. about, she talks about her own stories ab about yes. how, she decided to be in a rock band or to crotch. be in a punk band. Yeah. And, and <laughs> the, I'm not saying crotch, just to be clear. Be, the, her band's name was crotch. I don't have a sudden you, like weird curse word. <laughs> her band's name was crotch. I mean, the way that she, that she talks, like instead of in, in usually in these kind of books, they would have kind of stodgy titles <laughs> and how to, create your best life and that's a tall order but instead yeah. or or how to change your attitude or how to it's a textbook what you, it's a textbook instead uh i mean just fl flipping randomly one of her 
title or chapter names mm. is your brain is your bitch. <laughs> I mean, how do you not love that? <laughs> I, I can just, that's like written for you, isn't it? The, the wording of that <laughs> chapter title is like, you're going to read that chapter, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then, and then the, the next chapter is lead with your crotch. <laughs> and it, and that's about, that's about her band crotch. You know, it's just. Which coincidentally, she, she didn't actually know how to play the instruments. Exactly. And yet they ended up touring around yeah. and having a crazy fun <laughs> time. They learned a lot. So Adrian, what is the thing in your life that you want? What do you want your life to look like? Well, to me, again, just using that word badass, that, that's what I want to be. And to be clear, I, I guess because a word will mean something different to everyone, right? Some people, some people might go, oh, that's a dirty word. You said the word ass. To me, it's like, I think if you want to go where you want to in life and do your calling, the only way you, re one of the fundamental ways you know you're doing it is not everybody likes you and not everybody supports you and people are taking shots at you. So if you're liked by everyone, then you're not doing anything worth doing. And if you're the sort of person like me who wants everybody to like them and love them and you're a bit soft on the inside, that can hurt. And sometimes you go back inside your shell, right? Mm -hmm. But to me, being a badass is knowing who you are, number one, and then doing it and doing it unapologetically. And I think it's written in this book somewhere that, you know, never apologize for being you. So yes. there are certain things that you should apologize for, but when it comes to being you and doing you, and that's the thing, not just being you, but doing you and doing the best version of you. I really like that word of doing because that's action. It's very easy to be yourself when you're at home and no one else is watching and you go, yeah, I'm a badass. And then as soon as you go out, you go, oh, yeah, I'm going to be the good boy or girl. Um, but this idea of going out, doing you unapologetically and just living your life at that highest level. And there's a, there's a part in the book where she's talking about people who are doing a job that's safe, relatively well paid, or even very well paid, but they're dying inside mm -hmm. and Me saying that that's a waste of your life. And I absolutely agree. I mean, chime in if you want to, but it's like money is definitely important, but there's no reason why the, getting the money and being true to yourself have to be this sort of mutual exclusivity. We're not saying you have to go to an a cave and meditate 24 hours a day and, and never, although now I'm reminded of the chapter on loincloth, man. Oh, <laughs> we're, we're all so over the place yes. at the moment. Um, <laughs> do you remember that chapter, right? This is, where were, do you remember where it was? They were in the, was it in the desert somewhere? It was in the desert, either in Arizona or Utah. Um, and she and her friends were, were hiking. Yeah, and then right. all of a sudden, a man appeared. Adrian, take it away. Well, uh, she, apparently he was also quite good looking as well. So um, yeah. I think she was bending over to whack a peg into the ground because they were going camping and she looks between her legs and sees this guy holding a dead squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> it's literally a cloth man. Her friend cloth. had told her about him and, she, and she's going like, yeah, whatever, you're playing a joke. And then, yeah, boy cloth man. But that guy living, living his life unapologetically mm -hmm. and that's what he wanted to do. But to go back to this original question of like, you know, well, I was talking about being a badass. To me, it's doing you. And yes, you need to know who you are. But I think way too many people waste way too much time on that question of who I am. And I've heard you say this. You've heard, you said this to me before. It's like, do whatever you're going to do. Just take a step and don't do it tentatively. Jump in, leap in, and then a way will open up. Now, it might even be, holy shit, that was not the right step. But now I've learned something. And I think this is in the book as well. Like there's no wrong step. There's only learning or there's no failure. There's only learning. Yeah. But I think way too many of us are, are paralyzed going, oh, I, I might do that, but what would happen? Or it's not perfect yet. Maybe you want to write a book and it's like, it's not perfect. I haven't got the title. Or there's some project that you do or some job you want to go for, someone you want to ask out and you're going, oh, no, now's not the right time. Now's not the right time. Now's not the right time. It's the fear and it's your limiting beliefs. Which is also in the book as well. So I'm just thinking about this now because we're, we're covering so much ground, but this is what I guess the book 
is, right? I mean, we're both passionate about it, so we're jumping around a bit. I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll copy my highlights and I'll put it in the show notes for, for, oh. for this episode. I think that's the easiest way to do it because then people can see, hey, is this a book that resonates with me? And mm -hmm. to be honest, I'm, it's like if it doesn't resonate with you, I'm not sure how you're living your life. Do you think that's too harsh a call? No, I, I think that's spot on. I think that... It sounds a bit harsh. I'm like, if this book doesn't bit, appeal to you. <laughs> it sounds a bit harsh, but I think that these, what she writes about are such universal truths that I really, truly, fully believe that if it doesn't resonate you, with you, then you have more work to do. Yeah. yeah. In the self-love and pursuing what you want department. And on a personal note, um, what you said, what you said about believing, having this belief that you can only have money or only have mm. happiness in your job and that the two don't intersect and, and maybe it's money and, and, or happiness and a house or whatever, whatever it is. Money that, and friendship, money and love. Exactly. That those things aren't lining up for you. Um, I just, I grew up with that belief fully yeah. and that was instilled in me and i i refused to believe that yeah. um I, I remember my father who i mean just didn't take very good care of himself um we i remember us going up on a hike one time mm -hmm. and we were sitting down on a rock and just the two of us and he said, he said, you get to a certain point and you have kids and it's just over and it's, you can't, you don't work on yourself anymore and you don't work out. You don't take care of your health. You don't do this. You don't do that. And, mm. and so I remember, and I've told him this before, but recently, but I remember that for me, that was my fuck you moment that he told me that so many times that you can't have these things mm. you can't have it all that i thought i just thought fuck you i am going to show you yeah. and and that is where my drive for wanting to have the life that i have yeah from that's where i i going through my career people have always asked me how do you have this or how do you have that and and it's because I have refused anything less. Mm. It's because I have known that I am going to, I am going to make the amount of money that I want. I'm going to live my life and work with passion because that way you don't yeah. have to work a day in your life. Yeah. And I'm going to, I'm going to do so, so happily. These are my journals um, that I have, I have written through time. And this is my personal development journal. Let's see. Um, and I have written, I have spent, I, I mean, I write, I like to write, but um, I have spent so much time intentionally crafting mm. what I want to do. And to the point that everything that I show in my notebook I, I can show you now it's come to life. And that is why I'm so passionate and fired up about this book because it shows you how to do that. And wow. I feel like I'm living proof of that. That's fucking scary that you've actually written that stuff. And I've actually, <laughs> to be fair, I've noticed the same thing. And people say uh -huh. check in with your goals all the time and I'm guilty of not doing that. But even yeah. if I've written a goal like six months ago and then I pick up the piece of paper six months later because I found it somewhere, and I look at it, it's amazing how many of the things have actually happened. Yes. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. And I don't think you can explain that logically. So I think that comes back to the energy and the frequency that you were talking about. But I think writing it down is very important. I think carrying it in your head, it doesn't work the same way. There's something about writing it down that brings it to life. Yes. Um, I can even show in in one of my one of my notebooks 
Um, I wrote, okay. <laughs> I, this is just random. Sorry. This is so random, but I love that. Um, you can see it says what I want. Mm -hmm. Um, this is from July 19th of last year. So before uh, the move to essential tennis. Yes. Before the move. Um, it says for one, it says to play more tennis. Um, it says I want to go to Iceland this year, which you did. I just got back from Iceland. Um, I want to love my life next month and next year as much as I do, if not more than I do in this very moment. Mm -hmm. um, in one of my, in one of my goal lists, I'm looking for it right now. It actually says, I want to move back to the Midwest, which I did. And it said, no, no matter what, I'm going to quit my job at the end of the year, no matter what. And then, in 2016, I will be a full-time host. And Essential Tennis called me and they said, we're going to create this job for you. And you're going to have to help us to make the job, mm. ex you know, what, what you want of it. So I got to create my own job and be a full-time host starting the first week of January, 2016. And 2017. No, 2016. I'm thinking, like, oh my God, my yeah. God. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, so the thing is why I'm so passionate about this is because this shit works. Mm. And if you, want, if you want a better life and if there's something that you are not happy about, then it's up to you to change it, boo-boo. I think it, it comes down to choice again because I know some people are going to get it and go, yep. I'm going to read the book or I have, I'm already on my way. Great. And I know there are going to be people who go, oh, no, this shit doesn't work. I've tried it before. And that's also a choice. And this mm -hmm. is this sort of stuff, if you don't want it to work, it won't work. There's, mm -hmm. there's, there's nothing that's going to, you know, do take a pill and tomorrow you're going to wake up and be everything you want to do. I mean, it comes down to doing the hard work. I mean, I hate the word hustle. I don't hate it, but hashtag hustle. Yeah. But it does come yeah. down to you got to decide what you want. And if you're going to look at all the negativity in your life and all the reasons why you can't, then that's what you're going to get. So yeah. I love the fact that you have that many journals. I mean, God forbid you ever have to move house. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, I've Forget moved the a lot. Just take journals I journal everywhere. <laughs> um, yeah, this is it's exactly what I want. So I wrote, I wrote about in this one. It says. Um, 10 goals for August 2015 to August 2016. Um, and I wrote, I want to be at all of the summer tennis tournaments in 2016, take vacation to Iceland, continue growing through USPTA. I'm doing a, I'm speaking at a conference next month. Yeah. Find ways to coach more. Now I'm a full-time coach. Visit my family more often. That's uh, my job allows me to do that yeah. whenever I want. Um, be working on my blog full time. That's basically what I do. Yeah. Um, be paying my rent by being a TV host. That's happening. Um, you know, so all of all of these things, it just goes to show that if I, you take control of it, you can, and that book will show you how. I think your list might need some updating. Sounds like you've crossed off so many things. You need a new list. <laughs> That's what I'm working on. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I not surprised? Uh. <laughs> I, I think we could talk about this book until the cows come home. Suffice to say, we both obviously recommend that if you want to take control of your life and do it in a way that's really enjoyable, you have to go and get this book. I believe she's also coming out with another one very soon. Yes. Based more on the finances, do you know anything about that? Um, I know that I I subscribe to her email list, and I believe that she's finishing that book right now. I'm just gonna look and it up now. It's how to be. It's like, can you look up what the name of it is? Um, so jensinchero dot com. I love how it says "badass home." And <laughs> what do we got? So now so you sign up. 
So if you sign up to her email, you get the 10 se secrets to being a badass straight away. Um, and then when we go to the store, yeah, coming in April 2017, you are a badass at making money, yes. which would be absolutely huge because I think a lot of people think, yeah, I can be a badass when it comes personally, but, you know, I'm going to be broke doing it. And I absolutely disagree with that. Right. So that's coming out. You can pre-order it now. There's a You Are a Badass 2017 day-to-day -day calendar that would be interesting. And then the book that we've been, um, that we've been talking about. And there's, a, there's a whole lot, lots of bits and pieces here. Um, the Straight Girl's Guide to Sleeping with Chicks. So, as you can tell, the author does not hold back and is very <laughs> authentic, which is probably why we both love her. <laughs> uh, it's real. We, look, we've been talking about this book all, for almost 45 minutes already. I can't believe that. Do you, have, do you have any closing thoughts? I mean, I've read out maybe three of my 200 and something highlights. Um, <laughs> and I'm just well, going through all of this and going, you could live your life according to any of these and you'd probably be happier than you were before. Yeah. Closing well, thoughts. I, I'm looking forward to reading all of your your little nuggets and mm. then comparing notes to the things that I highlighted in my book. Um, but my, my closing note would be just that you deserve love. You deserve so much mm. in your life. You deserve, not that you deserve so much, you deserve it all. Yeah. You deserve everything that you could possibly ever dream for. Yeah. It's going to take a lot of hard work. But if you have the right attitude and you know how to program it, you can have that. Yeah. And there's no reason why you can't love yourself and make shit happen. So I recommend this book for you and anyone that is either having a hard time or who you think is a badass. Yeah. And that it's coming is coming up to Christmas. It is coming up to Gift Christmas. Idea. Gift idea. Yep. How to stop doubting your greatness and start living an awesome life. And everyone That's all does it's New Year's resolutions. So I think this would be a great I know it's not a textbook, but if you want to be prepared for New Year's rather than just going getting really drunk and then waking up and going, Oh my god, I hate my life. <laughs> it might, might be good to get this. I just want to chime in what you said, that deserving happiness. I think a lot, I absolutely agree. I think a lot of people have it in their head that if they're happy and successful, then they have to take from other people, which I think holds a lot of other people, a lot of people back. It's like, if I'm rich and wealthy, then I've somehow become a bad person. And it's absolutely not. I mean, like, if, if you are happy and you are successful and fulfilled, that helps other people. It doesn't yeah. detract from anyone. And believing otherwise is just really going to sabotage your success. Um, I just flip to a random passage here. And I think this is a really a, a poignant one to finish on. Uh, she's talking about Ray Charles, um, the blind singer. And she's described him as, she was thinking of, you know, when people make excuses. And she's written here, he was a broke, blind minority who was orphaned by the age of 15 and raised in the colored part of town in a time when slavery wasn't all that distant of a memory. And he went on to become one of the most influential and successful American musicians of all time. Basically, he wasted no time on excuses. And then underneath that, really? So when she thinks of her excuses, she's going, really? You're really going to let that stop you? When, when he did that and you're going, oh, I can't do that because I can't wake up five minutes early. It's like, well, we've all got our excuses, right? And I think if you really get clear on why, why you want to be a badass, and to me, you've just like that sounds compelling by itself, then you won't let the excuses stop you. So let's, um, let's leave it there. Otherwise, we might as well just read the book for them, Kirby, which I don't think we're oh, allowed to do. I know. <laughs> Otherwise, we could. Definitely. Uh, but I'll put, I'll put the links to, to everything below. I'll put my highlighted passages so you can see if I've highlighted more, you've highlighted more, and other people can also check out some of the passages. Perfect. And um, yeah, bye-bye. Bye. Hey, thanks for joining us for the Woman and Beyond podcast. Make sure to subscribe, and I'd love for you to join us at womanandbeyond.com for more great content. Speak to you soon. Bye.